networking, this mutual exchange of value, you have to do so many intentional things to make it as natural and organic as possible when you're in this context of reaching out to others or trying to extract as much value as possible in this professional networking relationship. Excel is an awesome way to stay organized and stay efficient to make it the most valuable for everyone involved. So I'm super excited to show you how to use Excel to maximize your networking efforts. Let's do it. Welcome to the Talking Shop Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Tometz. And on this episode, I'm going to take you through my entire full networking Excel sheet to show you how I maximize and how intentional I am with my networking efforts. And there's a few premise things that I want to go through before I get into this episode that I talk about a lot on this podcast, but just so you understand where and why I'm coming from. First, the goal of networking. The goal of networking is to increase your chances of whatever is next for you in your professional career. It's not to say that reaching out will be with reaching out to people will directly lead to a job or will directly lead to more people, which will then lead to a job, which will lead to another opportunity. You're just increasing your odds of that happening by getting better at networking, by increasing the size of your network, by meeting the correct people that are aligned with your what and your why. So that's the goal and that's the premise. And this is very genuine. Yes, you have to manufacture this. You have to be intentional to to create the most engineer, the most value possible for everyone involved. But at the end of the day, networking is connecting with humans. It has to be, you have to be genuine when you're doing this. You have to be real in your conversations and you have to be authentic. You know, just because you can be organized doesn't necessarily mean that people are going to want to help you out. So there is, I definitely want to put that out there, that it's not just typing all these names and all these websites and, and Excel sheet and everything coming your way. You still have to be a good person, a good professional, a good human and genuine when it comes time to actually network. This just helps you organize your networking efforts. And lastly, which I'll touch on a little bit later, but you have to combine, you have to combine the what and the why. People often know why they're doing it, but they don't really know where or people have the type of job or location of job or sector field, whatever, but they don't know why they're doing it. So I think it's really important to combine the what and the why, which I talk about a lot on other episodes of my podcast. I won't get too much into it, but, and let's get on to the Excel sheets. So first tab is the classic jobs tab. I have, I think I counted 20, 20 websites of of job boards and job postings, some of them for specific companies, some of them just for general uh, job boards. And I have a date of when I last went through all of these. So I try to do it on a weekly or bi-weekly basis of just spend an hour every Saturday, just going through all of these, applying to ones I like, et cetera, asking people about certain jobs that, that are in my network that might just know things about that job. And then down here, I have the link of every job I applied for, the date I applied for it, what company it was for, as well as if I didn't get it, if I interviewed for it, if um, they just yeah told me no, which surprisingly, I only got, was that two, four, six, seven, like eight or nine no's of like 60 jobs. But it's important to have all of these details saved so you know who to potentially follow up with, you know, when to follow up with them, you know, two weeks is a general ballpark and it just takes the guesswork out of it. And I might or might not have applied to the same job twice, or maybe they reposted it or something, but just no, ha having that whole catalog of what and when you apply to those jobs is definitely going to keep you on top of your stuff as well as having some consistency with just your efforts. The next tab, the power five tab. And this is going to go back to the combining the what and the why. So very briefly, I talked about this a lot on my podcast before, but 
I was on a flight to South Carolina with the beach volleyball team when I was at TCU. And I was look, looking out the window and I was like, dang, I'm getting flown across the country to watch these athletes, elite athletes compete in beach volleyball, collect their data, cheer them on, and then talk about the data on Monday. Like, how sweet is that? So it was at that moment, I decided that I wanted to do college sports science. And what a better way to figure out how to get into college sports science than asking college sports scientists how they got their job. And yes, I know I'm a rocket scientist. That's a pretty crazy concept, but I knew the what and I knew the why. So then it was just a matter of going and doing and taking action and, and executing and being creative and thinking outside the box. So I looked up every power five school if, and, and I blacked out uh, stuff on these tabs of people just for their, um, just respecting them and their privacy and um, just the ones that have uh, been nice enough to, to chat with me. But I looked up every staff directory of a power five of the power five schools, big 10, big 12, SEC, ACC, PAC 12, and anyone that had sports science in their title or in their job description, anything with technology, I put their name down. And if they didn't, I just put the link of the, of the staff directory to check back, you know, in case they hire someone new or they update the job descriptions, whatever it may be. And then the ones I highlighted are the ones I contacted. And then I have, if they responded or not, um, how we communicated next. And then these are also just big power five schools, I think, or sorry, big D one schools that just weren't power five that I didn't end up filling all of this out because, um, I started actually just working at TC boost and got busy and stopped my job search. But here's two tabs that I think are really important or two columns that I think are really important to illustrate this idea of thinking outside the box. And how intentional can you be with all of these efforts? And, and because I made this Excel sheet the fall of the second year of my master's, I had the spring coming up for the beach volleyball season. And I had locations of tournaments I would be traveling to. And that is important because I already have an excuse to reach out to that person. And, and here's another point that I made when I was giving a networking chat to a uh, college's exercise science week to all of their students is that it's one thing to reach out to someone and say, let me pick your brain, parenthesis, eye roll. And it's another thing to say, hey, I do X. I know that you also do X because of your job title. I think it's really cool and you are at location Y. I know that you're really good at Z. I have a specific question about this or just that concept as opposed to, Hey, let me pick your brain. It's, Hey, I know you're the sports science person for, for these sports at this university. I'll actually be on campus in three weeks. I'd love to connect if your schedule allows. It's pretty tough not to respond to that as opposed to, Hey, I know you're good at your job because you work at a power five. Let's be best friends, you know? So when you have these excuses or you have these legitimate reasons to reach out to someone, you definitely have to be intentional about taking advantage of those. And then not only did I have just the locations of the tournaments, but I also had the teams that would be playing at all of those, at all of those tournaments as well. So, because some strength coaches, sports scientists, tra you know, I traveled with the team, I can say, Hey, in a month, I know that we will both be at, for example, we'll both be at UAB if I'm reaching out to, let, let's say, the Missouri State person. You know, hey, we'll both be at UAB in a month. I'd love to connect, maybe chat on the phone beforehand, and maybe if our schedules allow, um, we could just get together and, and, and talk some shop, you know, hear your store and your journey. You are no longer a stranger you are making yourself more similar than dissimilar to them. You're saying that you have similar type roles, you're going to similar type locations and things like that, you know? And for example, they could respond, oh, I, I love going to UAB, it's so cool, da, da, da. And then you're like, oh my gosh, like, I'd love to hear all about it, I've never been there before. So you're just giving all of these things that are beyond just, 
hey, you're good at what you do. I want you to like casually help me out because I'm a stranger and you're nice. It's no, it's we're both here. We both do this thing. You're good at what you do. I want to respect that and just learn more from you. So those two tabs, although I didn't because COVID happened, I think are some of the more important tabs of this whole Excel sheet, just this concept of how many intentional things can you do thinking outside the box and taking advantage of excuses to reach out to people when you do have them. Next, when I moved back home, I looked up every university in Illinois. You have D1, D3, JUCO, NAIA that I could reach out to. And then I have some of their names. Uh, I didn't actually end up reaching out to those people because I just got really busy when I came back home and just my job search and what I wanted changed. But this is just another example of when you have that excuse to reach out to someone. Hey, I'm back in Chicago. I just did this crazy thing at TCU the last two years. I love to connect, you know, I'm 45 minutes away, et cetera, et cetera, as opposed to like, they would just be thinking, why this person or why me? It's, oh, they're pretty close. That's cool. You know, we can both, you know, you can make a joke about the weather or whatever it may be. But it's just showing that you're more similar than dissimilar. And now the big networking tab, and this is the moneymaker, the bread and butter of this whole sheet. But I definitely want to give those, those tabs before, even though I have a few coming up. I have those tasks before showing how much you can do that isn't actually like before you actually get to meeting these people, how many intentional things you can and should be doing. But whenever you do start accumulating and growing this network, you have to stay on top of your stuff. So going back to the definition of networking, a mutual exchange of value in a professional context, you are trying to extract value from them. And you're also trying to give value to them as well. Not that value necessarily means equal, but it's just mutual. There's things that I find valuable connections, a potential job, insight and advice. And there's things that they find valuable, the opportunity to give back, just to feel good, to talk about themselves, someone just to just to stalk them and show that they care about them. As simple as that sounds, you know, someone reached out to me and made a comment about the bio of my website. And I was like, you, you read it? Like, oh my gosh, that's so nice. You know, like I had no idea. So what can you intentionally do to make that as valuable for them as possible? And this is important because there's, there's a few, I'll, I'll go through the columns, I guess, to explain it. So I have just, if I've asked them to be on my podcast, if they have been on my, on my podcast, their name. Uh, the school or business, whatever it may be that they are currently at, uh, the means of our last communication, how many months it's been. And this is just a simple Excel formula that you can see at the top here. But so it calculates how many months it's been since we last chatted. And just knowing the people that I haven't chatted with in a while, I should probably reach out to them. You know, the people that I really enjoy, um, Maybe just stay up to date with them a little bit more frequently. The people that I didn't really like talking to. uh, I have, I'll explain that later. But how long it's been. If I had texted them recently in regards to connecting and chatting again. So it could be a while since we talked, but I could have recently texted them to, to connect again. And then our first communication, our second communication, third, fourth, fifth, et cetera, et cetera, which then auto updates how many months it has been. And then here, this big, you know, blacked out section is my notes of whatever we talked about and just the things to follow up on. If they gave me little homework assignments, if they connected me with someone else, et cetera, et cetera. And this is probably the most important thing out of all of it. And here's why. Because it is so tough to hop on a phone with this stranger in this professional context, someone that they really don't have any real reason to be helping you out besides just being a good person. 
to navigate those first five minutes, to navigate the first hour, to navigate just making it flow and guiding that conversation that you are receiving valuable pieces of information, not to stockpile them and just become a robot. But when it comes time to follow up the second time, you are not starting from square one because you can ask about their family, their kids, the new location. They said that they were, that they were going hard on this passion project of theirs, or it just gives you excuses to reach out. As in, if they're defending their PhD at a certain time, you write that date down and you put a reminder on your phone. Hey, how did it go? I know that you were defending on this date. Or what's another example? Just things like that. So it's giving you excuses to reach out, reasons to reach out. And it's giving you things to talk about to follow up with. So you're not doing this kind of awkward shuffle in the first five minutes figuring out how it's going to go you have things to talk about so like you're, you're not you're not trying to manipulate or be genuine, but you are just being as intentional as you can to make it the best conversation to show that you care to show that you remember these things that you're willing to go that extra mile because you care so much about this conversation that you want to make it awesome so i think that that is definitely one of the more important things about this sheet and down here, for example, I wrote handwritten letters to some of the people that I enjoyed chatting with the most. And I just had their names if I actually wrote it, when I, if I sent it, and then if they acknowledged that they received it. So for, what, for whatever it may be, you can just use Excel as a central hub or place to keep track of all these different efforts. Like I have six tabs on here. Next, so this is similar to the Illinois tree or the Power 5 tree. This is just pro. So I had the MLS, NBA, NFL, MLB, NHL, USL. And then I had all of the teams. Well, I only started with the MLS and the USL and part of the NHL. The teams, the title of this person, their name, uh, if I added them on LinkedIn, if I messaged them, if they'd responded, et cetera, et cetera. So just being on top of my stuff on reaching out to the right people, if I have a reason to, because of their title, et cetera, et cetera. And then keeping up to date on, on if, when to reach out again, et cetera, et cetera. And last, this is something kind of just for me, but this is just the treat. So it's obviously very blacked out because it's all just names, but I wanted to keep track of who gave me what person's number and then who or what that led me to and then who or what that led me to. And it was really cool just reflecting on all of this on how this networking thing really does happen. And consequently, as soon as you meet someone else, if they name drop someone, you're like, oh my gosh, they were like three branches ago on this tree. That's super cool. And you can make these connections about how you're both friends with this one person, or you can make a comment. And on this network sheet, you know, somewhere over here, is comments like that says that they know this person. So the next time that I, that I reach out to that person, I can say, Oh, you know, this person, we had an awesome phone call or this person recommended. I reached out. I know they said that you're good buddies <laughs> or actually one time the person was like, uh, was like, Oh, you, you got to chat with, you know, we'll say Johnny. Oh, you, you got to chat with Johnny. We're, we're really good buddies. Tell him that he's, that he's, a uh, an, an idiot, you know? Um, <laughs> and then the, the next time that, that we hopped on the phone, I hopped on the phone with Johnny. I was like, oh, you're good buddies. We'll, I don't, we'll call him Mike. Oh, I heard you're good buddies with Mike. By the way, he told me to call you an idiot. You know, and then it's just like, here's this random person that he's had a few phone calls with, just calling him an idiot through the phone, you know, casually. But it was very funny. And it started off this conversation and this phone call on a very positive kind of high note. We were all laughing and having a good time. So that's just one example of, you're, you're making it valuable. You're making them enjoy that phone call because you're intentional about taking notes about conversations you had with other people. So, so I'll, I'll kind of recap. So first, the goal of networking is to increase the odds of professional advancement, I guess, is another way to put it. It could be a job. It could be meeting more people. It could be new kind of side hustles or opportunities. And it's not to say that 
all of these people. And there's so many examples of this on my podcast about how these opportunities came to be like many years after first meeting and connecting with certain people which I think is, is important to note, but you're just increasing the odds of that happening. And the quickest way for those opportunities to not come your way is by not doing any of this. And you have to be genuine. Like I said, whenever it comes time to, to look over the notes of these people, to figure out what to talk about, to handcraft my first message to that person, you have to have the what, you have to have the why, you have to have things to follow up about. You have to make those mutual common connection points that make you guys more similar than dissimilar. And when it comes time to actually chatting, be human and be real. And, and I definitely could not have grown out this network tab of I don't even know how many people if, if I was just super and genuine and they just saw right through me and, and it was just super ingenuine. And it was funny that I've received many comments about how I probably network or have a better network than these people that have been in this field way longer than I have, or that just this crazy tree that has led me to certain people. They're like, wow, if you've made it this far, you've made it to me, you must be a decent person. So I think that there's so much to be said about being a good person, but this is how to maximize your efforts. How intentional can you be to make it the most efficient, the most worth your while, consequently the most worth their while. So it's the most beneficial, efficient exchange of value in this professional context. And you have to combine the what and the why. So for example, with the power five in the sports science, I knew the what because I'd lived it myself and I knew the why that I liked working. I liked traveling. I liked the school spirits. I liked working with elite athletes, but they were still like growing and maturing as adults. So that was my what, sorry, that was the why. And it, it just made so much, it would make less sense not to reach out to these people because I was so clear on the what and the why. And when I gave uh, one of my networking job search rants to another university, the University of Michigan, someone asked how I stayed motivated during all of this. And it took me a while to figure it, I gave him a way too long answer. And I'm sorry if you're listening to this, but it was simply, I had the what and the why in place. So it was just honestly a matter of just hitting scent and just going and doing. So I think that there's a lot to be said. I'm being crystal clear about those two things. And like, this was fun, like do, doing all of this, it was fun. It was easy, not, not easy, easy, but it was fun. And I was into it because I was so crystal clear at the time and how this sheet has changed based on my goals and what I want to do and where I want to go, it has changed. But like I said, the quickest way for these things not to happen is to not be doing any of this. So I'll recap the sheet and, and my rant. So you have the job boards, postings, listings that you just look at, you know, every week or two weeks, you have every job. And when you apply to it, person that you talked with, that you should reach up to them, et cetera, et cetera. Power five, specifically because that's what I wanted to do. People that had a certain title that I wanted to chat with. And most importantly, the places I would be traveling to and the teams that would be there to give me an in to chatting with them. Give me an excuse. Give me a good reason as opposed to just being some stranger from the internet. And then I have all the schools from Illinois. I have all of the pro teams. I have the tree of all the people that I met. And then I have the actual people how we talked, when we last talked, and things we talked about. So that is my full networking Excel sheet explained. Hopefully that makes sense. If there's any questions, please let me know. And this sounds, it might seem kind of crazy or kind of extra or kind of over the top, but how can I make my end of this mutual exchange of value, networking, professional context relationship, the most valuable possible. Well, if, if I'm reaching out, if I'm trying to get value from these people, well, I have to make it the most valuable on my end by knowing what to say, when to say it, who to reach out to, et cetera, et cetera. So go for it, have some fun. This isn't the only way to do it, but this works pretty well. I would change the organization of some things, but whatever. So yeah, hopefully that helps full send 
go for it. You got this. Make it genuine. Make it valuable. Have a good time. You're connecting with humans. And happy networking.